it just uh, was so clear to me that how uh, relationships are very critical when it comes to human life. You will actually understand there is only one oath if you ever take oaths in any other place that will end in such a life. Till death do us apart. And if there is a lot that ends in that, then that means that something is so special, right? Because what else is special than death? Death is very special. But it's the only thing that can actually bring, can take you to kiss you after 30 years. Follow you. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Death has a way that you can just escape. And the Bible is clear to point out and say that marriage is this one special thing. Today I want to teach and talk to us on a, a subject looking in the mirror. Looking in the mirror. And, and uh, there's one lesson that I've learned. Um, that if you want to learn something in life about yourself, then have a good look of yourself in the mirror. Because when you do look at that mirror, you will actually learn lots of good things to other people. Because the mirror doesn't show you about other people, but shows you you. And if you're careful, and you uh, you take that phone and maybe you want to take a selfie, you'll actually focus on yourself. You won't focus on the poor person, right? Looking in the mirror. You know, when you look in the mirror, you will always remind you that you are working in progress. That you actually ain't perfect as you think you are. So not you. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and you are like, there's nothing to improve? Hey, come on guys, just speak to me. Even if you look at the mirror right now, won't you find something to change? Or to just rectify? So when you get into this mirror thing, you will you get what I'm actually talking about. You see, marriage can have these three things, can be one of these three things, and it all depends on how you choose it. One, marriage can be magnificent. You see, marriage can be sweet experience. You see, marriage, have you ever seen those couple who walk and you're like, um, mm, I really love those lovers. Who gets what you say? Who do you say? <laughs> you see, marriage can be magnificent, but also marriage can be mediocre. You see, if it's not sweet, marriage turns out to be transaction. And I'm sorry, I know maybe we've seen or some of us have only married with Twitter transaction. Like either two. Because kids are involved, we have to push on. You know how it goes? And there is no love. Yeah? Uh, and uh, marriages of convenience. Because you can't quit. Because you're afraid of what you people say, right? Or because you don't want to tarnish the image of your family and you just have to be there. But let me ask all of us who are sitting here. Can any one of us who are sat here predict? In 30 years time or 20 or 10 years time, when you get married by the grace of God, how you marry today? Can you? Or would you actually figure out that you're going to be sleeping in different beds? And that you wouldn't pick that one when you see how Paul Kano is called coming? Can you predict that? If your life, your marriage has not become magnificent or mediocre. To return out to be miserable. And I'm sure you see quite a miserable number of people. And if unfortunate enough, we may be grown up in miserable families or marriages. A miserable marriage is one where there's no satisfaction. You see, a marriage where no one is happy. Why, when someone just sits around and uh, what goes through his mind, I'm going to kill this person. Have you ever noticed when uh, a couple is dead, who is the number one suspect? The spouse, right? Why? Have you ever thought about it? 
You see, this kind of marriage can lead you to two things. One, it can lead you to look for easy medication, such as gambling, drinking, whatever else. Affairs, having affairs out there. If you're miserable in marriage, if you don't get a quick fix, it will end up in divorce. I've had a chance as a pastor to minister to poor going through divorce, and it ends up a good thing, by the way. You, you see, imagine standing in front of that judge or that attorney, and uh, he has to come into your personal life and dictate what is going to happen. You think he's sweet. Uh, did you watch the proceedings of this senator, the current minister for Africa something? Venturi. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot <laughs> we are into series and these other things. But all that thing, and um, all the secrets, I think the, the woman whom they were having, whatever, is now an MP somewhere. And uh, it was so bad, because everything was in the bedroom, was that what was brought to the full clear? everyone else. It ain't a good thing. And that's why, friends, as you all gather here, if you agree or you don't agree, the number one fact means is this. We all, by grace and by faith, we pray that we may be in families of the world. Right? That's what we, that's what, and actually, that's the reason that's why we were brought here. Most things, um, that say, if you remember, that God expects every person to get married. Now, that is Real. I know the ideal is you can choose not to. The same, no couple has ever married. No couple who has ever married ever stood in that pulpit during that wedding day and thought that his marriage would end. Anyone? Okay. When you attend weddings, what comes to your mind? Be honest. You start planning your wedding, don't you? Oh, come on. You're in church. You can lie in church. How about all of that? What goes through your mind is, I should have a better one, right? That's what goes through your mind. But as it ever dawned on you, that it may not work. You see, everybody always dreams. Watch the cartoons and movies, so let's say, and they lived happily. Yeah. But you know that it only happens in some fairy tales, in some uh, <laughs> some love stories or comedy. But you know the saddest thing is this: majority of people are never ready for marriage. If you may permit me, how do you know that you're ready for marriage? That's what I talk about. And uh, the man of God will come and talk about something else. And um, as I say, you just move every stereotype, open your mind, uh, listen. When you hear, it doesn't make sense after we learn, just discard it. Are we together? But um, I actually woke up at 3 or 4 or something preparing for this. And uh, I had actually prepared something different. But uh, God placed this burden in my heart. And I'm praying that uh, this may help somebody. Turn with me to the book of Genesis. You see, the best place where you can learn about marriage, it is where it all began. I know where it began. Where? In the Garden of Eden. Now, if you don't mind, go with me to the book of Genesis, chapter number 2. Genesis, chapter number 2, verse number 8. From verse number 8 through 23. Please, I'll read and listen to the reading. This is what the Bible says. Genesis 2. Verse number 8, the Bible says this. And the Lord God brought the garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, that is good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of the garden of Eden toward the garden, and from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is P zone, that is which compasses the whole land of the other, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is gold, there is gallium and the onyx stone. 
And the name of the second river is Gihon. And the same is it that compasses the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hidekal. That is which goes toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave them his four cattle, and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man may be a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now all of my bones, and I finished that point for me. The flesh of mine. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the land. Believe and pray. Dear Lord, I ask that you may make the subjects you're going to study today, looking into a mirror, clear with your children. May you help that young person to get out of this place with a determination. The Lord, you are not only going to lead him into the right person. But that he can be the right person, that the rest of the other person is looking for in Jesus' name and prayer. Amen. So seven signs that write this this down, seven signs that that um you can use to know that you're ready to get married. I notice something here. You see, God holds back the creation of Eve until he's in Adam that shows that he's ready for Eve. And these are the seven things that I'm not sure. It's ten or me, it's a myth. It's not a good three or four. Now, watch this. Who says to Adam, it is not good for you to be alone? Who? Does Adam realize that he is not good? Now, who realizes that Adam will end good? But for how long had Adam been alone? We don't know, but for some few hours, right? But Adam had not realized that he was what? Alone. Why? Do you agree with me if I come to this conclusion that there was something in the life of Adam that made him to be contented? Do you agree that there might be something that was happening in the life of Adam that made him to be contented with his siblings? What do you think that thing was? What do you think that, that thing was? God. Okay, you get it. You see, what establishes Adam is the fact that he learned to be content in a relationship with God before he ever came to the relationship. Okay, you still okay what I'm saying? How do you expect God to bless you into a marriage relationship when your relationship with him is messed up? Okay, you're still not getting me. You see, the relationship between you and God is more than having a stick of Jesus. Oh, I'm not even your number one. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. Ah, now let's get this. Now, if you don't need to go faster, please walk with me. Are we together? I just. Thank you. Let's have a communication. Yeah, it's an African thing. Now, um, a relationship with God, as I've said, it goes beyond putting us in favor of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Before. A relationship with Jesus goes beyond putting those songs as our skills at you. A relationship with God, 
It must run so deep. And that you can easily recognize God when I'm miss the noises that are going on in this world. Your friend is what I'm talking about here. This relationship must be a daily relationship. You know what the Bible says in Matthew 6, 6 33? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, then all this shall be what did Adam have at first? God. Oh, what was that that you did? Hey, come on, church. Wife was an addition because he had God. Does that mean the God? See, someone does not complete your relationship with God. And you have to come to terms with that. Some of us believe until we get married, we get into this relationship, that's when our relationship with God will do, will do what? Will grow, will be intimate. No person can unite a people. You know what I'm saying? No pastor can be able to pray for you, a prayer so powerful to make your life last for eternity. And if you're honest with yourself and me, some of us have prayed for a relationship for way too long and it has not worked out, right? Why? Because the person is he who is trying to join you with God. It is the relationship which is trying to make you pray, not because of the relationship with God. I pray that God may expand your mind to you and serve that same God. You see, it is only God who comes to give the plans of life, not a that person. You know, your heart is Christmas, I know you love prophecy. And unless they fall like you, don't understand the message. So let me try this. In Revelation 3, verse 1, there is, John is writing to the seven churches. And the first church is the church of Ephesus. And God is angry with the church of Ephesus. Why? Because it lost its first love. The reason is why God is angry with Ephesus. It is because it had lost the only true love. Can I say something? You can't learn to love if you have lost the first love. Some of us are in love that are lost. Why? I come on church. Just show me that you are busy getting what I'm saying. You see, God. It's only God who can give an understanding of how to love God and how to love God. It is only God who can teach you how to do it. Trust me, so far as cannot do it. Some of us have watched since we were 13, but I think all their foods. You see, God has a lot to offer in our social lives. The first thing that Adam wants on is what? This relationship with God. Now this is it. If you are here and you never plan to get married, please get this right. You must have a working relationship with God. Point number two. Now watch this how the scene is playing out. God has shaped Adam and he gives him an assignment to take care of what? The garden of Eaten. He says, steal the garden and take your wheat. Now notice the lesson here. Now God will not bring Eve till you have learned what to do with what with the reasons as to why God chose you. God will never bring the person in your life until you understand your divine assignment in life. Still not hear what I'm saying. It's until Adam understood the will of God. It is until Adam understood he had a mastery of his assignment. It is until Adam worked out his career. It is until he had a skill at hand. It was until Moses had that thing in his hand that God told him, now you can go and make the children of Israel where? To the promised land. So it was until Adam works out something and is able to put himself together. It was until he's, he had a clear agenda of why God created him. That's when Eve comes into the picture. So what happens when Eve comes? Eve comes to help him fulfill his assignment in life. Some of us think that a partner will come, I end up a family, 
will give us the happy life of ever God. That's great. What our pastor comes to do is to make sure he or she polishes you to be what God has. Otherwise, you are divine assignment. Someone who wants to get you out of that mastery that God has placed in your head, please know that the devil is talking with you. Because you have God made somebody, what does he come to do? To help you fulfill your assignment in life. But now we come to make you be a better person in your career, not to make yourself more important. Am I speaking with something like sisters? This is how do you know you are going? How do you know you are getting mature? When you will be willing to allow the other person to get hurt that you withdraw from God's mind. You know that you are actually getting mature. If you can say, this whole God has pleased for me, if you are making me choose between the two, I have a reason to I'm not, I'm not have any difficulty to choose because I know what I can do with that. But the challenge is that those of us not know about the most. The first love is so important. Go to number three. I want to watch out in chapter 2 in verse number 18. What does the Bible say there? The Bible says this. Aha, what is this? 20 minutes are almost done. Lord, what he says, and the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. Let us take him somewhere. So God says, Let us get someone for Adam. He was the man that he noticed. I don't know if you have ever seen this in the Bible. God did not say, Let us make a partner for Adam, and immediately he makes it. I don't know if you have ever noticed that. First of all, he says this. Immediately, uh, I want to use some grammar here. No sooner had God spoken these words, huh? then that he did what? He's, he created what? Animals. Now, friends, if you are an artist like me, God seems to have gotten it wrong, right? Don't you think so? God says that you need someone, and what does he pray? Oh, come on, church. You've been praying to get a husband and you get one of the points. Pray for your cats. I, I, I want you to capture this, but this is very important. God creates animals to cure the problem of who? Adams. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. Why don't you think God gets killed immediately? But instead, he creates animals. And to make the matter worse, he brings the animal that they should pass before who? Ah, uh, come on, church. To pass before Adam. I you know what God tells Adam? He said, Now you name them. Then, does that make sense to you? You will only, and then God gives you animals that they should pass by, and you start naming them. Men are dogs. Men are. I come out, how do you call the man? Frogs. Uh huh. Does this make sense? Does this make do you relate to this verse? God is bringing all these big animals and they're passing by. And he tells him, You know this. Oh, come on, saints. <laughs> now, what is this friends? I'm rushing this out, sorry. Notice, when God, it is when God brings in the first time that Adam lends in what? Woman. But when lions pass, he calls them lions, cheetah, gazelle, goat, chicken, fish, eat, no, no fish. Uh -huh. I just want to make sure that you understand the fish story. You guys are good. He names all these things. And, um, but when he sees Eve, what does he say? Woman. Or if you can't well, we come from woman, right? <laughs> but can I ask you, how does Adam get to the confidence that this is a woman 
and not a cow. Lolita, how do you recognize that this is the real man? A lot, a cheater. I don't, I don't care. How come you don't call my dogs and maybe they even don't call it man? And another listen to this. How does it get to that this is over? Now let me ask you, why don't you think that Adam doesn't pick a cow, yet he was? Ah, come on church, he was born in, right? You know, when you find all this so-called LGBTQ and all this foolishness that goes around town. Uh, when he, if, 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 if you need a cow to ease yourself, why didn't Adam do that in the first instance? I'm not still young. Amen. 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 Please forgive me for that in your mind. But uh, please get this. This is the lesson here. Adam really realizes that not everything presented to him is important. Adam recognizes that not everything that passes by is what he needs. Is that true? Some of us go part picking every pop, big and curry that comes, and the feminine is true. Pick everyone that passes, and every comments. But not everything that passes by is what you grasp. Now, notice this what God wants in you is that you may learn to say no to some things. What God was trying to build in Adam is. You must have enough self-control and discipline to say no to some things and say yes to the right things. Oh, come on, church. Before you plan saying yes, I do, you might, you must have learned the laws. And actually, the law, you know that the law is very important when you get married. That you have to say no to every other, the beautiful ones who are yet, you are getting gone. You'll actually come to know that in marriage, though, it's very important that God was creating you able to realize that I not only need to be disciplined, because if you are not disciplined, you cannot be beautiful. Does that make sense? You cannot be disciplined like this is the gun I'm beating for the man, then you will be unfaithful. I know if you are unfaithful, what happens? You lose trust. Does that make sense? So when you lose trust, you have anything that is working, everything is dead. All God is was telling Adam is this, you can't just jump to anything that passes by. And I think someone needs to hear that. Let me repeat it again. You don't need to jump to every man who attends supper. Ah, uh, come on. Not every girl whom you go to her. You know, this is what Adam realizes. I can't settle for hundreds. I have to wait for who? Ah, come on, I have to wait for if. Ah, and I pray that may have young people who have good senses to realize that. Now, let, 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 me, let, me, let me say this. You know, animals can blind you, so not sure. They can blind you unless they your vision fails. Animals can weaken the only love that you have to give. So if you give all the love to animals, what will be left for Adam or Eve? Oh, come on. Some of us have shared some love with so many animals out there. Are you getting what I'm saying? Well, let me ask this to which will make sense. What's the difference between a woman and an animal? Because they don't the problem is the difference, right? So, what's the difference between an animal and a woman? <laughs> that last doesn't do call me. No, what I'm saying is this. <laughs> the difference between an animal and human is this how they were formed. How are animals formed? Ah, come on. God gives the dirt, right? Animals were made from dirt. But what about him? She came from, from the ribs. That makes a difference. You see, Adam recognizes that I cannot settle for that. Ah, come on, church. I cannot settle for that. Adam recognizes that he can only take something that is like 
something that is worth my status. You see, animals are made, human beings follow through. Oh, come on, you don't need to be a PhD in zoology to understand that. Do you? That's a question, do you? Animals are beneath human beings. In this, I want you to pray to you. Enough this day. I want you to learn to say no. I want you to realize enough strength in you to say no to other people when you get married. So God will pass all over those other people so that he can say, but until you are strong enough to say no, then God can entrust you with marriage. Because marriage is not a it's not a walk in the park anyway. Anyway. And you notice this in your second day of marriage. Or when, 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 when she forgets to wash her face. That's when you realize that she's not going to have to face too. So you need enough strength in you. Number three. In dealing with the animals, Adam realizes a very quick, uh, Adam realizes that there is a huge problem. Who realizes the problem? When you're dealing with animals, what is the most difficult problem you can encounter when you're dealing with a cat or a dog? Communication. Adam realized though the animals are here, they cannot what? They cannot talk. Adam realized that they cannot share anything. And they, number one problem that ruins marriages is lack of. Okay. What is the number one thing that kills relationships? Communication, right? Adam realizes that he cannot communicate with. I didn't say when that person cannot communicate with an animal. But I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, friends, there are many issues in marriage. So many issues. First, to me, Atakwamusha Kichiko is a very serious issue in marriage. And you realize this in three years time when you get into this. But you know, communication is the only thing that can work out those issues. Let me break this down. Communication is the only tool that can put off, can put out fire in any relationship. Do you agree with me? When you communicate, you can listen to the matters. What if you don't? You know, what shows that you're mature? Ability to communicate. And let me give you tip number one of communication. Learn to control your anger. Do you get know what I say? You know, you realize who a person is when he gets angry. Number two, in communication, you need to understand this. That your actions always communicate louder than, than your words. Some of our actions are too animalistic, so loud that love can be heard. Communication, one thing you need to learn is it's important because it's only through communication. That you can understand how someone handles frustration and disappointment. And the day frustrations and disappointment comes, so many of them in marriage. Because after staying for one year, you realize that the, the, the old coating is doing what? Wearing off. Right? Now, until you know how to handle disappointment, that uh, I didn't order food in a global, you thought she's the one who cooked. And if she can go into a party, then you realize that the support is wrong. So now this is important. Because in the end, you know what the Bible says? That Adam and Eve realized that they were naked and they were not ashamed. His friends get this. They realized that they were naked and yet not ashamed. Now I want to tell you this. There is a difference between naked and nude. Who can give me the difference between being naked and being nude? What's the difference? I don't want to be no car from the seats. 
What's the difference? Oh, oh come on. Please let your neighbors know that it's called a name in English even if it will not so. That's it. What's the difference? Ah, come on. You see naked beings, there's nothing hidden. But you can be mute, but there are parts which are hidden. Do you agree? Yes. No, this is what Paul is saying. That Adam and Eve were naked, yet they were never ashamed. That they saw literally everything, and yet they were not ashamed. You see, the major difference after this is this. With nakedness, there is vulnerability that it comes to this. Because when you are naked, it means you are here, Kabisa. You are so vulnerable. You surrender to not you. So it means God was telling Adam, but before you get into this, you must learn how to get vulnerable. Because if one thing you will understand for marriage to work, you can't keep secrets. Oh, come on. No secrets. You have to learn to know what to speak. How do you know this person is serious, by the way? How do you know you're getting serious into something? Vulnerability is very important. Because nakedness has a way of revealing emotions. Everything. And you know, when you become vulnerable, it exposes you to the risks of being hurt. Come on, church. Yes, it does expose you to being hurt. That when before you decide to get married, you must be ready to be hurt. No, that's not so sweet. But that's the truth of the matter. You know, I just say there's no secrets in marriage. That doesn't mean there's no privacy. If you want to privacy, but my wife, my wife can go to the bedroom and I, I do that stuff. But immediately she comes out. She needs to reveal that. Next year, two years, then you'll understand, amen? You know why? Because you are naked and not ashamed. This is my last point, so that I wind it up. Take it as your point number six, because it's not time. Point number seven. In order for God to create Eve, Adam had to go to sleep. Two or two. How deep was the sleep? The Bible says he, Adam was in a deep sleep. This is the lesson. Now, before you get into this, how long were you ready for this? Now, I told you, remember what is our message, our subject? Looking into a mirror. How do you know you're ready for this? God is telling Adam. You know why he went into a deep sleep? It's because I want to teach you the lesson of sacrifice. You, you don't seem to get what I'm saying. <laughs> that Adam you must be willing to give up something so intimate to you. Okay, it's still not clear. God tells Adam, what I'm going to do is a very complicated surgery. Closer next to your heart. And I want you to really know if you are really willing to sacrifice. Because this surgery might maybe require a subsequent surgery or it can actually cause you to go into an eternal sleep. Are you willing to take this far? Adam, are you willing that you will go to a sleep and for information? Let me give you this. It's a little bit of uh, some, some Bible language. The word that God uses for Adam in Genesis, this will let me please see if you allow the Muslims. In, in, in John 11, God says about Lazarus that Lazarus is doing what? He's sleeping. But what was his sleep? Death. Now God tells Adam that in order for me to work on you to see if you're ready for this, I must see if you're willing to do what? To die. Ah, come on, church. Are you getting where the ball comes from? Till death? Towards our hearts? What God is saying is, are you willing to sacrifice? Before you get into this thing, 
himself forward into the mirror. And ask yourself, am I really willing to sacrifice? What was put to the body? Okay. It's okay. You're, you're loading. It's fine. There are many computers that depends on too much. Uh, that's on the light note. But brothers and sisters, as I stop this mic and uh, leave the pulpit, I want yourself to have an introspective view of your life, social life, and all these things. Have a good look at yourself in the mirror. And ask yourself, are you really rich? Notice, I was always speaking to us what to look for. But what to look for in yourself. Until you get that answer, until you are clear to the fact that you're waiting for it, then no man can be waiting for you. God blesses even as we think upon those things. Yeah. Yeah.